Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Jen Seal and I welcome you to today's, um, not really a practice today actually, I'm calling it a posture clinic. Um, if you're like me, when I first started doing yoga and even years after that, um, I was really interested in learning the proper form of doing the postures because I entered into yoga doing power yoga and I just, I didn't know what I was doing at all. It took me a very long time to even learn my right from my left. So there's a lot of postures that we repeat um, in the course of a yoga class. And there's quite a few of them, all of them actually, <laughs> that if not given attention to kind of like how we get into and out of these poses, we can sort of put ourselves at, um, at risk of of either not engaging in a pose so it's beneficial or putting yourself in harm's way. So what I'd like to do is just share with you for today just five um, five poses that we do frequently in class that um, have some misalignments that, that are pretty common that I want to share with you. And, and you can practice sort of like going through these postures uh, with me and, and really focusing. It gives you a moment to focus on, wow, okay. Am I doing this to the, you know, in a way that is most beneficial to my body? That's really what I want to get to with you guys, is just to really share with you the universal, the universal uh, principles of alignment in, in all of these poses that are so awesome, but you want to get the benefit out of everyone by doing it in a way that is meant for your body, how, how your body's meant to feel, where you're supposed to feel it, stuff like that, right? So if that sounds good. Um, I have recorded a, um, a warm-up video that you can watch first if you would prefer over just putting yourself into these poses, but we're not going to do any kind of deep back bends or anything like that. So you're welcome to just sort of fiddle with these all at the same time, um, just one at a time, and practice them just anywhere. Right? You know, you can just do practice warrior two. Okay, I'm going to practice my warrior two alignment today while before I do my dishes or <laughs> or even incorporate them into whatever other activity you may be doing. Okay, so we're going to get started. Okay, the very first one I want to attack today is cobra pose. Okay, and cobra pose we're laying on the belly and it is a posture that is a back strengthening and shoulder strengthening pose but it's also a, a chest opener a heart opener as well so oftentimes what i see is a lot of like ears up to the shoulders crunching in elbows out so we're going to look at that right now so let's let's get ourselves set up um, with good form in cobra so Cobra is a back bend, so we're not we're not seeking to overextend ourselves. So the one thing one thing that we want to do is start with the feet. Okay, so you're laying on your belly. You want to make sure that you're on the meaty part of your thighs. So just turn your toes under, just kind of lift one thigh up and then the other, and make sure that they're not your heels aren't out or or you know your knees aren't outward as well. Tops the feet press down, so it's pointing your toes towards the back of the room. Okay, now I'm going to suggest you come up onto your uh, elbows and your palms for for a moment and you're going to just sort of lift yourself up and pull your elbows towards your hips so that the front like from your hips to your sternum grow longer you want that and then slowly you want to come down you create space for your front body okay now good so your toes are pressing down your pelvis is pressing down and you have elongated the front of your body bring your hands by your breastbone and hug your elbows in by your sides, okay? To start this pose, we normally, you know, um, bring our forehead down onto the mat. And what I see is a lot of people just dropping their shoulders down and letting their arms just sort of be like chicken wings, right? You wanna really draw the elbows in, if you can see, and down, okay? Take a moment to breathe in and out. As you lift the forehead up, right? You're keeping that extension where your shoulders are down, your elbows are down and hugging in and you're just lifting, using and squeezing the back muscles, right? Shoulders on the back, slightly looking forward. You're not looking up. I see that too. Nothing to look at up there, guys. Looking down towards the front of your mat or even down at your mat, okay? 
And if I asked you to, you could just lift your hands. We're not up here, okay? That's not cobra, okay? Cobra is literally a gentle lift where your belly button and your hips remain on the floor, as do your feet. I see this too. Toes lifted, so toes down, pelvis down. Let's try it again. Forehead on that, breathe out. Slightly lift your head, elbows hug in. Palms are engaged on the mat, but they're not, they're not lifting you up. You're using your back muscles here. And then down. Tops of the feet press, pelvis press, so your legs are still sort of engaged. Maybe your glutes are even a little bit on fire, or are, are engaged as well. Hug the elbows, shoulders down, lift up. And back down. Let's just counter that by curling the toes under, elbows hug in, knees and press up. And just come into child's pose just to transition here. Bring your arms behind you. Come on up. Okay, the next one, guys, is um, plank to uh, chaturanga or plank to lowering down, okay? So we wanna make sure, again, I did cobra in the beginning to, to, to have you have this memory of the elbow staying hugging in by your sides, okay? So in a plank position, I want you to look at your hands, spread your fingers nice and wide. And the hands, my friends, they're not in, a lot of people are in, and then they go like this, their elbows splay out. So you want to have your palm, your pinky, or your pointer finger pointing up towards your mat, the short edge of your mat, or slightly tilted outward, okay? And maybe a smidge wider, so that your shoulders have room, right? Now, the other thing I see people do, all right, is they do this. Their head is down and their shoulders slink in. So right away, I want you to push, like you might be going into cow or cat pose, but just push into the shoulders. So you're doming your upper back and then take your head back in space and slightly look forward, maybe about a foot and a half. Then you're ready, your upper body is ready. You extend your right foot back behind you. This is coming into plank. Extend your left behind you. And now instead of, if you bend your knees, your booty's gonna stick up. I want you to pull the booty in and draw the thighs back. And then the head goes back, pushing into your heels, okay? Pushing into your heels just a little bit and then come forward slightly, all right? And your core is hugging in. So imagine you're doing a gentle, gentle mini cat here. You'll notice you pull the belly in and it's back nice and strong, right? This is plank pose, right? Again, this is what I see, this, I see this, okay, I see this. Now pull it in, back, strong. Now breathe in, and lower your knees down. Take your hands behind your back, open the chest. So the first one was a back strengthener. That was definitely core, shoulders, arms, glutes, thighs, probably one of the top three uh, best strength. Uh, body strength exercises there is on the planet, I will just say. I love it, okay. So just something to notate when you go into side plank pose, that's where you wanna go to. So just a quick demo on that. This is not one of the five, but again, back, back, head back, tailbone down, put the booty down, gentle cat, and, and you just roll, right? Roll and stack your hands one or feet one in front of the other, or stack them on top of each other, right? Lifting here, nice and strong. Head is back, and you might want to look up. So you can practice that on both sides too. Right? But it comes from this beautiful position here. All right. If you're practicing chaturanga, chaturanga arms only go, you again, start in that plank position, right? They only go to 90 degrees, and you are shifting your weight forward and coming to 90 degrees, that's it. Head is back, okay? Now my knees are down here, but hold on a second. Sorry. Okay, I was recording another one there. <laughs> 
just finished recording another one. Okay, so when we go to, down to Chaturanga, again, start in plank pose, shift forward, hinge halfway, then we go to up dog if we're going there, okay? But if your Chaturanga looks like this, right? It's not as beneficial as it could be. You're not gonna build strength in your arms by letting your elbows go outward like this. This is what I see in the front. When people are here and they wanna go down and they, their elbows are out, their shoulders are up by their ears, right? And no good. Okay, so if you're trying Chaturanga and you find that this is too hard to go all the way down, then bring your knees down and practice what you can, okay, until you get there. And then maybe transition to downward dog. That's just a means to a little counter pose, a little take some pressure away from your shoulders. So let's do it together again, okay? Forward to that high plank. Now check yourself out here, looking slightly forward. Where's your hands? Hand position. Are you, you know, slinking in between your shoulder blades? Pull it back. Is your belly drooping down? Engage your glutes and pull it in like gentle cat pose, right? Lifting the thighs, squeezing the butt. Now, shift forward. Begin to bend those arms. Keep the butt parallel, halfway, and then up dog. Downward dog. It's all about alignment in the spine. Good. Bring the knees down. And again, let's just roll the shoulders. We want to make sure that we're resting in between these. And relax. So the next one we're going to do is a standing pose. Okay, so we did cobra, elbows hugging in, right? Um, plank. Again, strong, long body. And then Chaturanga arms, elbows, and again, shoulders back. So all these things are intertwined, they're interrelated, right? So standing posture, balancing posture, another strength building posture is eagle pose. We're on one foot. What I see a lot of times in balancing poses is a lack of engagement, okay? Muscular engagement is huge in every posture. Muscular engagement here, when we serve their left, I'll demonstrate on my left leg, okay? First of all, Get that alignment, head is back, shoulders are down, belly is lifted, tailbone, engage your glutes, right? Push into the standing leg, begin to lift the toes just slightly so you can feel that. This is what I see, okay? There's no gluteal engagement, the hip is out to the left and already you've, you've, you've unbalanced yourself. Push down, engage your glutes, draw it in, belly in, now it becomes core, it becomes thighs, it becomes butt, right? Before you even do anything, being here is beautiful like it is, right? So maybe practice this, just practice this for a while. Bend into that left leg, bring your hands to your hips, just make it about the legs for now. Cross it up and over. Now people like to take their right hip with them. Draw it back, so take your hands to your hips. They can point that toe down toward the floor, squeeze and hug everything in. Okay, this is building strength in that standing leg, big time, and that butt. And if you want to add the arms, right leg over, right arm under, you're crossing your, at the elbows, turn your palms up, elbows lift. The palms can turn towards one another. They don't have to, okay? Do whatever feels good for you. And what I want you to notice here is that Okay, I am pulling my belly to my spine. I'm sinking down into my hips. My shoulders are back toward the wall behind me. My elbows are lifted and the hands are away from the face. If you need to put your toes on the mat for stability, that's fine. And again, the hips are facing forward. My belly button has a flashlight shining forward. That's what it looks like. Eagle pose from the side. The belly's not popping forward, spine is nice and long. Take one more breath and release. Reach the arms up, tiny back bend as a counter pose. You can do that as many times as you need to. 
Again, I would practice 20 seconds to 30 seconds. That's a lot. But if that's the only standing balancing pose you're going to do, right, then do it for at least 20, 30 seconds. And you do it one to two times on each side. So obviously when you do your left side, you're going to do your right side, okay? That was pose number four. The last pose I want to show you today, again, a strength building pose is chair pose. Most people don't like chair pose. I don't like chair pose. <laughs> but learn to love chair pose because chair pose, okay, chair pose, we took something like this, right? We're not going to worry about the arms today, so we're just going to bring the arms forward. Um, is you, you can't not engage your glutes. And folks, must, gluteal engagement, all of the poses, is something that we just are not mindful of. We're so worried about our shaking arms, our shaking legs. We forget about our butt. Now, because I like you guys. <laughs> um, I love chair pose with my feet together. I will admit, I believe that it is because I think that when I'm here, I'm squeezing everything in and it's helping to stabilize me. Maybe that's just the mental thing, <laughs> but that's okay. You can do it this way or you can do it with your feet apart. To me, this is horrible. And you have a tendency to knees buckle in. So you wanna make sure if you have your knees slightly, your feet slightly apart, that they are in alignment with your ankles, okay? Feet together, feet apart, Let's go. Toes are, if you can, if it's not uncomfortable, toes are pointing forward. You really don't want your toes pointing outward and that's, a, that's the natural orientation of where your hips are. Okay, otherwise, toes forward, toes wide. I'm bringing mine together. I'm gonna start with my hands on my hips and literally just bend your knees, okay? Push the booty back, push the knees back. So your chest has to come forward for a moment. Bring the weight into your heels. And even if you want, you can bring your hands down towards the floor or you can bring them in front of you. It's really not about the arms at all, you guys, but just feel it here, okay? This is first, a strong, beautiful booty. The belly is lifted in gentle, gentle um, cat pose, right? Just engage the, engage the core. Shoulders are down, yes, head is back. Sink a little deeper if you can. Can you breathe? You can feel your thighs, you can feel your butt, you can feel your hamstring stretch. You can feel when you're up here, your shoulders growing stronger as well. And stand. Breath in. Breath out. All right, now my friends is in the fifth pose, just to loosen up our hips. Okay, we're just gonna take nice wide stands here. Turn your toes to the right, and just bend deeply just for a moment into warrior two legs. Turn them in, turn to the other side. Right, you can stay in warrior two for as long as you want. So I'll be doing a standing standing uh, posture clinic for my next five exercises. If you're interested in that, warriors, triangles, extended side angle pose, things like that, because they also can be very uh, misaligned and you know, so you're missing on the benefits. I just don't want you guys to miss that. Really, it's all about muscular engagement. It's about focus and attention and great body awareness. Okay, so this is what the posture clinics are all about. So today, we did five poses, really actually strength building poses that help you engage in the right muscle groups so you know what you're feeling, when you're feeling it, when you're in a class, it's longer, you're going to know what you're doing, and you're going to have a great time doing it. So thank you everyone for joining me today and have a wonderful, wonderful, whatever it is you're doing. Namaste.